Goedemorgen, goedemiddag, goedenavond. It's Marco Catanio again, uh, representing Charles Sturt University, subject coordinator for ITI 597, the subject that covers like IT service management according to like ITIL's good practices. Hey, in uh, this topic, I'm going to introduce the concept of a problem. Uh, let's make some problems. Let's create some problems. Yeah, still one of my favorite websites, dictionary.com. Uh, let's look at like their definition of a problem. Uh, as a noun, a problem is any question or matter involving doubt, uncertainty or difficulty. It's a question proposed for solution or discussion. And as part of like uh, mathematics, it's a statement requiring a solution, usually by means of a mathematical operation or geometric construction. Have fun there. Okay, so we're dealing with problems here. So, what does EITEL say about a problem? Uh, what's the definition of a problem according to EITEL? Well, they say a problem is a cause of one or more incidents. So, a problem is a cause of one or more incidents. They also say the cause is not usually known at the time a problem record is actually created. So, then the de definition almost becomes like the unknown cause of one or more incidents. So, something is happening we don't know what's causing it as yet, let's investigate. And that's why it also says, like the problem management process, they are then responsible for further, yeah, like deeper investigation. So a problem is a cause of one or more incidents. Okay, let's, uh, I'll give you some examples of like problems. Well, at least I think they're problems. Global warming, isn't that a problem right now? Can you think of some incidents like, uh, I don't know, more rain, uh, getting warmer in summer, more bushfires, all that stuff? There are lots of incidents that all lead towards like, hey, there's something going on. How are you going to deal with this? We've got a rising world population and we've got like 9 billion incidents. <laughs> and maybe global warming and the, ri the rising world population actually like, maybe there's a correlation there between those two as well. Nuclear meltdown. Uh, I'm thinking of Chernobyl. And uh, I, I know how they dealt with like Chernobyl as an incident. They just they just poured like millions of tons of concrete on top of like the nuclear reactor. They may still be dealing with the problem today. Okay, world recession. Ha, what's what's caused the world recession? Eco economic like world recession right now. You may have like a citywide power outage. Well, that's like a major issue, of course, like a major incident. Uh, yes, of course, you want to restore power. But you also want to prevent like power outages like from occurring again, from happening again in the future. You may have like a critical application crash. Again, you may reboot the application. You still need to understand like what happened and how to prevent it from happening again. You may have lots of users eh, getting the same error message on their screen. Again, that's a problem. You may have a batch of faulty network cards all creating issues. Again, you've got a problem. You may have a whole business unit not being able to log on. So like the, 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 the service desk is swarmed with calls. And they may like say to the users like a hey, reboot machine, reboot machine, reboot machine. Maybe something else is going on. So eh, create a problem. So some examples here. It doesn't mean I already know what's what's causing it, okay? I'm just like identifying problems here. So let's talk you through this example of like incidents and problems, okay? At some stage hopefully you will see the light. Many users call the service desk that they can't log on to their workstations. Incident management records all the incidents and follows, for example, a standard procedure had to rebuild the user profile, which for now resolves the incident. Well, problem management records a problem record and investigates the user profile issue. It seems that only an update to the desktop operating system can permanently fix the issue. Now, problem management will raise a request for change to actually rectify the error. So that's how, for example, like incident, problem, and change, how they seem to work together in like service management space. Here you've got one of my own little toys. I call it the solution life cycle. Uh, you may have seen from the introduction that like a number of incidents, like similar incidents, or like one major incident, may lead to the identification of a problem record. Now it's problem management that will do the investigation. And if they find a solution that requires a change to be made, uh, they will be submitting an RFC, a request for change, into change management uh, to get approval. 
If change management actually gives approval, it's actually the process release and deployment management that actually makes and implements the change. Now, these four boxes, these four processes, they also all interact with the process service assets and configuration management. They roughly, uh, it's this process called SACM, Service Asset and Configuration Management. They roughly manage all the information that relates to, like, well, IT space. So you get all these relationships here. So there's a nice cycle going from incidents to problems to changes, releasing something, and before you know it, as something goes wrong again, and you're, you're ending up with like new incidents. So there's this nice cycle, and it's a very natural cycle. It also really shows you that like it's really a connected world uh, in IT service management space. All these idle processes and all these IT service management processes, they all have strong relationships with each other. Yeah, where would a theory be without practice? So another practice what you preach exercise. Uh, of course, it's all about understanding the concept of like problems and their related incidents. See if you can identify one or more incidents in your household that may have a deeper underlying problem. So uh, some examples here, uh, one or more incidents, uh, the kids often come home with a late note from school. So the problem is like kids are late for school. Uh, one or more incidents, the car won't start properly and often needs a jump start. So we've got a car problem. Uh, we've got many leaking taps in the house. Okay, so we've got a leaking taps problem. Don't jump into conclusions, okay? Don't think about like the root cause as yet or the solution as yet. Just identify the problem for now. And the problem, again, a problem is like one or more related incidents, or a problem is linked to one or more related incidents. Yeah, Twilight Zone. Simple question. Hey, uh, which one of the following statements is incorrect considering the concept of dealing with a problem? Answer A. The underlying cause of a problem is typically known at the moment of recording. Answer B. Similar incidents could be linked to a problem. Answer C. Problems may get resolved through the change management process. And answer D. A major incident could immediately lead to the identification of a problem. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about the answer. And then as usual, we move on. Okay, so what's the answer? The answer is answer A. The underlying cause of a problem is typically not known at the moment of a recording. So a problem is often seen as like the unknown, underlying, undiagnosed error of one or more incidents. I'll repeat. A problem is often like seen as like the unknown, underlying, undiagnosed uh, cause of one or more incidents. In the next topic, we're going to define and explain the concept of a workaround. Hey, until then, uh, live long and prosper. Nano, nano, and as usual, I'll be back.